Thank you very much for having me. So I'm kind of excited about this. Hopefully some of you are some WWE fans. Um, 55-year-old brand, 55 years old. WWE is one of the largest global sports brands in the world, digitally and socially. Uh, please welcome George Steele, who's been there for 10 years and the most recently the co-president of the WWE. So he's going to start with a couple slides. He promised me it's going to be fast, but That's the right. data and the info, when I looked at it, Really impressive. I think you guys are going to be shocked at how big they are. Yeah, just to give everybody a little context before we get into it. So WWE today, about a $3 billion public company. We just had our fourth year of record revenues, uh, over $800 million in 2017. Global scale, we'll talk about this, across every media platform in the world. 30-year uh, history of innovation. So a company that started as an event company became a global media company. And today, as Peter mentioned, the leading digital direct-to-consumer sports brand in the world. So the business at a high level, as I mentioned, it's media across all platforms, traditional pay TV, the AVOD platforms, we, are, we have our own SVOD direct-to-consumer platform, certainly consumer products, number one action figure in the United States last year. We do almost 600 events around the world, about 150 of them is what we use to create the media. And then our talent. We have a t talent development center in Orlando, Florida, where we're training the next generation of WWE superstars, half of them from outside the U.S., and we'll explain why in a second. When you look at media, we create 1,500 hours of content every year, and we tier the content on different platforms. So we do about 500 hours on the traditional pay TV platforms. That's live event content. We do about 600 hours on the AVOD platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. And then we do about 400 hours that we deliver direct to consumer on a subscription basis around the world for our most passionate fans. So the other two platforms broadly distribu distributed, direct to consumer, we go deep with our most passionate fans. Time is the ultimate metric. So whatever, whether you're in gaming, media, it's all about time. Last year, we did about 6 billion hours of video consumed around the world. The number one country for us, and I'll touch on it, is India. 80% of that video is consumed outside the United States. If we look at the, uh, the consumption in different markets, if you look at traditional pay TV, our content, five hours live event content, 52 weeks a year, averages more viewers than any cable network in the United States. In India, with almost two and a half billion hours consumed, I mentioned it's our largest market. WWE is the third biggest sport in terms of total consumption in the country of India behind cricket and kabaddi. I mentioned our direct-to-consumer platform. Peter talked about data. We have become a data powerhouse. A third of our revenues now come on digital platforms, and over half of our revenues are direct to consumer. That's up from about 10 and 15 percent, respectively, a few years ago. We're the number two branded sports uh, SVOD service in the world. We just announced over 2.1 million paying subscribers. On the AVOD platforms, right, 900 million social media followers. Peter mentioned we are the largest sports brand in the world on social media. On YouTube, 20 billion lifetime views of our uploaded content. That makes us the number two subscri subscribe channel on YouTube in the history of YouTube in the world. Number one is T-Series, which is a Bollywood uh, movie um, service available on YouTube. If you look at just sports, we're by far the largest sports brand on YouTube in the history of YouTube about five, four, four to five times the viewership of either Dude Perfect or the NBA. So that's who we are, and turn it over to you, Peter, to uh, get with I was it. just more shocked that number three is Ryan's toy review. I it's amazing. Uh, so I, wish I, I wish I had my daughters do that. So I'm just going to, before we get into the other stuff, because yeah. I do have one question that I, when I tweeted, we just need to know, is The Rock running for president in 2020? Yeah, I can neither confirm nor deny that The Rock is going to run for president. All right, so we talked about 2 million subs and data. That's a lot of views. How are you, you know, we think about WWE, we think of media companies, data scientists, data engineering, the culture that you've kind of built there. What's it look like? Yeah, so it's interesting. 
If you went back seven or eight years, we were like any traditional media company, right? We had a small digital team. Within that digital team, you had about five or six data scientists. They were supporting about 10% of our revenues. So today, it's a third of our revenues. Half the business is now direct to consumer. So we've grown from five or six to about 40 data scientists within WWE, supporting every part of the business. And internally, the culture, it's a seismic shift in the culture from this traditional media company without very little access to data to one now where we can really, really help uh, put smiles on our fans' faces. Ultimately, that's our mission, right? We want people to enjoy their time with our content. And the more we know about what they enjoy, the easier it is, uh, it easier it is for us to give them more of what they enjoy. So yeah, it's been a, not only a capability shift within the company, but culturally, it's a big change. So moving to the WWE Live subscription, using data, understanding the audience, how do you decide what to put on USA versus your subscription versus Hulu versus live events, pay-per-view. How did you kind of look at that, your fan base that is 55 years yeah. of age and pushing that into a digital strategy? Yeah, you know, we were talking about it backstage. Uh, my, co my colleague, another co-president, Michelle Wilson, I probably, we spend the most amount of time internally on that question, right? Because we're creating 1,500 hours of content We've got the pay TV bundle, we've got the AVOD platforms, and we've got our direct to consumer. And the question of how do you, where do you put that, con which content goes where? Because what we don't do, right, so it's very dissimilar than an HBO that's saying, I'm going to give you HBO either over the top or through the bundle. And you pick which one you want. For us, that's not what we're doing. We're actually taking that 1,500 hours and putting chunks of it on different platforms and hopefully navigating people through the ecosystem. So in essence, what we're always trying to do is accomplish one of four things. How do we bring in new fans? How do we get our current fans to spend more time in the content? And how do we monetize? And so, if, look, it's, it's unsexy, but you have every piece of content, you have those three goals, and you, and you, and you look for white spaces. So, Total Divas, Total Bellas, Miz and Maurice, reality series. And we thought about where should that go? Well, we thought the pay TV bundle on a network that maybe skewed female was the best place for that, as opposed to saying, hey, that's for our super fans who really love the in-ring wrestling content. So you have to make those decisions. Uh, so it's a, it's a big old ugly chart uh, where we say, here's what we're trying to accomplish, different demos, different countries. Where do we have white spaces? Let's go fill that in with new type of content. So remind everyone the cost. It's $9.99. On the subscription, On the service. subscription. Yeah. Pricing, how do you decide that? How do you grow your business, which went from $800 million last year? Yep. We talked about when they hit a billion in revenue, that's going to be a party, right? <laughs> how do right. you kind of grow that business? How do you think about the $10 subscription when there is Netflix and Hulu and ESPN and you know, on and on and on? Do you think consumers and using you know, your behavior of what they want to consume, is it just lots of packages? Is it one price, all you can eat? How do you kind of think about that? Yeah, so I, what was it, Barksdale, that said there's two ways to make money in business. You either unbundle or you bundle. Um, our direct-to-consumer was an example of unbundling. We had that content in the pay TV ecosystem. We pulled it out and went direct-to-consumer. We still have content in the bundle. So when you say, how are you going to grow that 800 million? I think we grow it across all three media platforms, AVOD, direct-to-consumer, and the bundle. And you know, we, again, we talked about it backstage. There will be bundles of content. So right now, everybody, you know, we started this direct-to-consumer five years ago. We were the first ones in the traditional bundle who did it. Now everybody is doing it or announcing that they're right. going to do it. And I think what they'll find, like what we found, is you want to be in all places. There is a place for some of our content to live in the bundle. Today it's the five hours of uh, live event content. Um, where that goes in the future, we'll see. But uh, I, if you ask me today, we'll always have a presence in the bundle. Now, who does the bundling? Whether it's the same companies that do it today or different ones, I think that'll be determined as an IP and content creator. Um, I'm less concerned with that. I'm more concerned about putting it on the right platforms and making sure my fans can find it. I will say, look, that six billion hours of time consumed was really fascinating. We now do a billion of that on digital platforms, and that was zero seven years ago, right? Wow. right. You go from zero to almost a billion hours. And today, any time I want to put content anywhere in the world in front of my fans, I can do it. 
It wasn't that long ago that if I wanted to do that, I had to do it in a capacity-constrained environment, paid linear TV. Today, that's all gone. I can deliver live content anywhere in the world anytime I want, or scripted content, or animated content. It is in incredibly um, invigorating and liberating. Let's talk about live. Yeah. How many live events, and what was the most recent? Two, one in New Orleans and one in Saudi. Like, how big were these events? Because I think it's shocking to see, they showed me backstage the video of the production of this, and it turns out <sighs> wrestling's not real, but I, well, it's I, real. I, I it's just real, know who wins but and like, loses. Yeah, man, so it is real. You know. Man, you must be a lot of fun at the movies. You stand <laughs> up and go, that's not real. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously we do a lot of events. We do about 600 of them around the world, about a quarter of them outside the United States. We create media from about 150 of them, right? So we're actually filming and creating video. Uh, largest one we do every year is our Super Bowl, or as we like to say, the Super Bowl is the NFL's WrestleMania, but uh, we did it in New Orleans Four here weeks a couple ago, of right? weeks ago. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago at the Superdome, sold it out, uh, almost 70,000, had people from all 50 states and over 60 countries, right? Because of that global element, that's where we're different than a lot of the sports yeah. leagues. It's a global, we bring people in and we'll generate anywhere between 150 and 200 million dollars for the community we do WrestleMania. Wow. As Peter mentioned, it was a, 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 what we did about a week ago, uh, unbelievable, for the first time ever. We, we played the Middle East, we played all over India, Asia, all over the world, but we did a large scale event, a WrestleMania scale yeah. event, uh, to a sold out crowd uh, in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. So we announced recently that we have signed a 10-year partnership oh, wow. with the GSA, uh, which runs the sports for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and it was our first ever that large-scale event outside the U.S., and we chose to do it, unbelievably, in a place that had never done an event like that and sold out King Abdullah Stadium. Oh, it's worth watching the video. It yeah, look, banana. for all you who are not WWE Network subscribers, yeah. you get your first month free, <laughs> download it, Right, look, download it, look for the greatest Royal Rumble, watch the first 10 minutes, yeah. and you will watch a sold out stadium in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia explode yeah. as our talent enters the ring. Yeah, so, the energy, and then the you can lasers, I hope you won't, crazy. you can't cancel. Um, so, uh, you say 80% of your viewers are global, 80% of the consumption, consumption is outside the US. So, localization, again, thinking about data, how do you think about character development and language and are you you know how do you think of the translation yeah of it all? wrestling is you know it's universal but of course is are you subtitling all the content yeah. are you translating the content are you dubbing the content yeah. so yes to all of it i think that the amount uh, the question will be do more and more yeah. right so we have those 1500 hours we're probably uh put localizing a third of that in multiple languages we, we do in about 30 languages but my dream, you know, five years from now, we'll be creating much more content. It'll be, all the content will be in 30 languages because we know that when we localize it, it goes deeper. People engage with it more. So today we do Hindi, English, Punjab in India. I want to do 10 languages in India of every piece of content that we do. And that's what we're scaling up to do. On the talent side, you know, we, act, we have a, uh, a physical presence in Orlando, Florida. Kind of looks like an NFL training facility and Hollywood back lot combined. Really? Yeah, where we have 100 talent training to be the next generation stars. And we create media from them. So if you want to see their cool. progress, you go on the direct-to-consumer service and you can see their progress. But the real fascinating thing is today, half of that talent that's training from outside the U.S. So we just did a recruiting event in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. We did one in Dubai last year. Uh, we'll do one in India coming up. So we, around the world, are recruiting talent. So Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, what are, where are you spending more effort and time, right? We all think about building our brands as startups and big corporations and engaging consumers. Where are you finding the most value? So look, we have 900 million social media followers across all the platforms you mentioned. Number one sports brand on YouTube. Uh, so we invest across all those platforms. Six or seven or eight years ago, we were doing to bring in the next generation and, and also do storytelling 24-7. Today, we do it for those reasons. And as everyone expected, the monetization is coming. Uh, Are you pretty loose on the IP usage? So 
you know. We, we're aggressive there, yeah. We, now again, we're pretty, we're really careful about tiering the content so it raises everybody. But the, you know, the typical other people cutting it, posting a video on YouTube, how are you? Well, yeah, we support our create, you know, yeah. we support the creator community. Uh, we claim the video when sure. they use our video, but, but we're supportive. Uh, we, we don't believe that holding the content back yeah. helps. We think the more time you spent with our content helps all of us, Brand including affinity. our partners, right? Including our partners. If it's good for WWE, it's going to be for everybody who touches us. So, VR, yeah. AR. I saw some stuff. I'm good friends with Hugo Barra and, and Brandon over at Oculus. Yep. Uh, what kind of cool stuff are you doing in VR? Because this is the environment, right? Like, how do I am in the ring with them? I'm training with them. I'm you know, yeah. So what's that yeah, look, like? I mean, if, if you've done VR, I'm assuming everybody in the crowd has, go, go at either next VR, we're doing stuff with them right now, as well as with Little Star. So we're yeah. doing VR with next VR, posting uh, matches, um, walks down the, uh, uh, out, of the, out of the Tron to the, to the ring, and you are there with the talent. It's amazing. We did AR with Little Star, who's also a, a company we, um, who's in our venture portfolio, uh, and that took two of our superstars, uh, Japanese talent, Shinsuke Nakamura against AJ Styles, and you, you get to see and, and live and breathe what they're seeing, and it's, it's a really amazing experience. Uh, we'll see over time where that lives. You know, is that on the direct-to-consumer? Yeah. Is it in the, on the pay TV side? How big is that? How, do, how big do you think that is? Today's small, so yeah. today it's, uh, for us, it's experimenting in different ways to entertain our fans. You know, my belief, AR more than VR probably five years from now. We think it's a, uh, a combining the digital and analog worlds, we think is, for us, for our type of content, is an interesting opportunity, but time will tell. Eventually, the, you know, eventually all of us will decide which one because it'll, it's what puts a bigger smile on your face. What's the, I guess, for, what do you think the most interesting insight on this all? You, know, you consume, you have 40 data science, you have an engineering, you're building a product culture around seemingly a massive audience globally. What is the most interesting, one or two interesting things that you found you're like, that? Well, what's great about, you know, everybody here knows, what's great about data is how it can flip your prism of how you view the world, right? So I'll give you one example. When we started out and came out with the DTC, we said, this is really for our playoffs. That's what's on the DTC. 15 special live events, including our Super Bowl. That's really what people are gonna watch. Well, it turns out that's not the case. First of all, we've got about 20 different cohorts that watch different things. Yeah. So some people watch the 80s and they wanna go relive that. Some the 90s, some today. Some want to watch some of the reality series or docu-series that we do there. So the big learning for us was it wasn't a monolithic viewing behavior. And so that now is what influences how we program, not only on our DTC, but now that learning is making its way to what lives in the bundle and what lives on the AVOD platform. But I will tell you, it completely flipped our prism. That's all of our time. Great. Fascinating stuff. Yeah. Thanks, George. Thank Thanks for having me.